Right, before I start doing uh, profiles on injectables, I wanted to go through half-lifes and esters. So, we'll start with the basics. What is a half-life? It is a medical term for the, the length at which a chemical is active. And it is literally the half-life. So, for example, if you took 500 milligrams of testosterone enanthate. Now, enanthate has a half life of 10 and a half days, 10.2 days, it varies slightly. Um, so, we'll go for 10 and a half days, so it's nice and easy. In 10 and a half days, you would have 250 milligrams of enanthate left active in your system, it would have reduced its strength by half. Now, in medical terms, this is allowed to repeat five times and it's classed as being spent. Obviously, depending on the dose, would depend on, on the starting point, would depend on whether it was any going to have any implication of the strength that was left remaining within the body. Now, all, not all steroids, should I say, because some steroids don't have an ester. They are base or suspensions. Uh, now, this basically means that they are not an ester, they are just the hormone itself. And in such then, their half-life is a matter of hours. Um, and then you start getting into different ones. So, formate is about one and a half days. Now, there is some plus and minus with this, because people metabolize, metabolize drugs at different rates. And to understand this a little bit, what you're going to understand is that the hormone has the ester attached to it. And for simple explanation, basically imagine it as a coating around the hormone. So when it enters the bloodstream, enzymes within the bloodstream start to eat away at this coating. And it's the resilience of that coating that denotes how long it takes for these enzymes to get rid of the coating to allow the hormone to run free. That's the easiest way of explaining it. However, what's worth bearing in mind is that upon injection, there is some that is physically separated. The actual action of injection can physically separate the hormone from the ester. And as a result, even on a long lasting ester, you do get an initial flood or initial hormone dump upon injection. So there is always a slight level of spike upon injection. Um, this soon dissipates and then the esterification uh, controls the release of the rest of the drug. Personal metabolisms can affect it and the ester can separate from the hormone itself uh, through other mechanisms. So esters and half lives are, are, are a good guideline to work on but there can be variations and it's not impossible for something like in an anthe, uh, uh, which has a 10.5 half-life, to actually dissipate at a faster rate, depending on you as an individual. So it's worth bearing that in mind. However, in general, the rules are pretty standard. So as I was saying, formate is a half-life of 1.5 days. Acetate is generally regarded as three days. Propionate is generally regarded as two days. Um, Phenylpropanate, 4.5 days. Butyrate, 6 days. Valorate, 7.5 days. I'm reading some of these because I can't remember them all. Uh, Exonate, 9 days. Capriate, 9 days. Isocapriate, 9 days. Heptanonate, 10.5 days. Enanthate, 10.5 days. Octanoate, the root of that one myself, to be honest, is a rare one. 12 days, sipinate, 12 days. Noanonate, 13.5 days. Decanate, 15 days. Underdecanate, 16.5 days. They are your general esterification half lives. Now, base, like I said, it's nothing at all. But now there's another thing you've got to remember as well. We take steroids based on molecular weight, on, on weight, on milligrams. The doses is recorded as a weight. Now, if we've got 500 milligrams of a compound, then 
and it's got an ester, then the ester is going to take up some of that weight. Ester weighs something. So if you're going to take, some example, 100 milligrams of test base, so that's testosterone with no ester whatsoever, you're going to get 100 milligrams of hormone. However, if you're going to take a testosterone propionate, you're going to get around 80 to 83 milligrams of hormone. Because the other 17 to 20 milligrams is the ester. So if you take an anthate, you're looking at about 70, 72 milligrams. Again, the other is the ester. A sipinate, we're looking at about 69. And when you get down to like uh, a decanate, you're looking at 62. So the longer the ester, the bigger the physical ester has to be, and therefore the more weight it contains, therefore milligram for milligram, less of the actual hormone you will receive. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Now, another thing is blood plasma levels. Basically, the stability of the hormone within your blood. Now, it's generally regarded that if you're taking something like a propionate or an acetate, you take it every other day, or push it every three days. But what people don't look to do is when you're running stuff like enanthates, is that you take it every other day. They tend to take it once or twice a week. The bottom line is, the more frequent the injections, the more stable your blood plasma levels will be. Now, there are a couple of um, online calculators you can use where you import your injection frequency uh, and the amount of hormone and it will give you a, a guide to the blood plasma levels. It's something I want to include in the app where I'm working on. Um, however, if uh, does it make a great deal of difference in the real world? I'm not so sure. Uh, maybe not so much from results. But from what I've seen in the real world, it does from a point of view of side effects. I've found people that have suffered with, with side effects, um, libido crash, appetite issues, test fluid, such like, when they, when they increase injection frequency, they tend to cope with these things a lot better. Because your body's taking less of a hormonal roller coaster, and I think it's more poignant the older you get. Um, when we're in his early 20s and such like, our body's used to quite big hormonal fluctuations. When we start getting into our late 30s and 40s and beyond, it's not. Things have been stable for quite a while. So when you start throwing in a lot of tests one week and then don't do it again for five days, it can be a quite a bit of a shock to the system. So as a result, I would always, and always have done and will always do, the massive, biggest amount of injections I can based on the dose I'm taking. Where it's practical, I mean, obviously, you're not going to put a quarter of a mil in a day or every other day, it's ridiculous. But if I'm taking anything over two mil, then I'll split that into two or more injections. And I found it's a lot gentler on me uh, and, and on, on any sides I get from the drugs, and which I don't get a great deal of anyway when it comes to actually side effects and a way of feeling different. So I hope that helps. And then what I'll do is I will start on testosterone. I was going to do the single uh, esters, but it seems ridiculous. So I'll just do testosterone and mention the various esters in that conversation. I'll also probably go into a little bit about blends like Sustanon as well. Okay, so next week we start with testosterone. <laughs>